Gamification, at least in its more behavioral manifestations, tends to be very heavily about rewards. But there are lots of different ways to do rewards. First of all, many different things can be rewarded. So Foursquare, with its famous badges, has rewards for all sorts of things. Rewards for the first time that you check in, rewards for checking in 10, 25, 50 times, rewards for checking in every day, rewards for showing up at a bar a certain number of times, rewards for being part of a swarm or a flash mob where lots of people are checking in in the same place, and so on and so forth. So the first point is that creative and effective gamification designs will think pretty expansively about what can be rewarded. What kinds of behavior does the designer want to incentivize? And what are different options? Again, the goal is to give users, aka players, a set of meaningful choices and a set of options that make the game feel more engaging. The second aspect of rewards is that there are different categories of rewards. And uh, one typology of different kinds of rewards, not at all limited to gamification, is what's called cognitive evaluation theory. And this comes from Richard Ryan and Ed Desi, who we're going to meet in the next segment when we start to talk about self-determination theory. But one of the things that they developed was a typology of different kinds of rewards that can be used to motivate behavior. So the first category, the first distinction that they highlight is between tangible rewards and intangible rewards. Physical things versus things that are not real in any physical, tangible sense. So a badge is an intangible reward. It's not something you can take with you. It's not something you can hold in your hands. On the other hand, money is a tangible reward. But not all tangible rewards are money. A Boy Scout badge, the sewn-on patch that goes on a Boy Scout uniform, tangible reward. Lots and lots of kinds of rewards may not be directly for money value. They may be of sentimental value or uh, status value or something to the person that receives them. That's still a tangible reward if what they get is some physical thing. If what they get is good job, that's a verbal reward that's intangible. And if they get something digital, that's also an intangible reward. Second uh, set of distinction for rewards is between expected rewards and unexpected rewards. Sometimes we know the reward is coming if we do certain things. Sometimes the reward just happens. It's a surprise. And our brains love surprises. We're going to talk about this more, but we're hardwired to seek out surprises, to find them interesting. That dopamine pleasure system of the brain loves surprises. So that means that an expected reward isn't quite so cool to the brain. But most of the rewards that we tend to think about, especially in areas like gamification, where the idea is designing for certain behaviors, tend to be expected. They say, if you visit the site a certain number of times, and if you make X number of blog posts, you will get this reward. And so you, as the player, see that. And to the extent that the reward motivates you, you're responding to the expectation of getting the reward. So distinction between those kinds of rewards and ones that just come up by surprise, even though they may be on some defined schedule or algorithm by the designer, but to the player, they are not expected. Third set of distinctions has to do with what the rewards are contingent on. What is it that the player or other participant has to do to get the reward? And here there are several different kinds of subcategories. The first subcategory is if the reward is non-contingent, i.e. you get the reward no matter what. You don't have to do anything, you just get the reward. That's uh, the reward not being contingent upon a task. Not something that we see too commonly in gamification, and not something that we see too commonly in general, because then what's the point if you get the reward automatically? Second category is if the reward is contingent upon engagement. And engagement here means starting the task. So if we want someone to paint our house, we will give them the reward when they start painting the house. Or if we want someone to uh, do something on our website uh, or uh, check out our product reviews, 
just starting it is what gives them the reward, whether it's a badge or some amount of points or even some money. Third category is completion consist uh, contingent. So here it's not just starting it, it's actually finishing it. You have to go all the way through and finish the task in order to get the reward. Remember the uh, MLB.com badges that popped up when you watch videos and certain things happen, those were completion contingent. Uh, remember that one of the people who was talking about them on the blog site complained that his coworker shut down the computer and therefore he didn't get the rewards because the reward system was designed that you had to watch the entire video of the game in order to be eligible for the badge. So that's an example of being completion consistent uh, contingent instead of engagement contingent. And finally, performance contingent. Both of these two, the engagement and completion one, require someone to do a task, but they make no assessment about how well the task is done. Either you start it or you finish it and that's enough. Performance contingent says you have to do well somehow on the task in order to get the reward. We are rewarding you not just for what you did, but for how you did it. So those are a spectrum of different kinds of rewards that can be offered. And for now, uh, let's just bracket the question of how effective those different kinds of rewards are. But they're different kinds of rewards, all of which can be applied in gamification. So let's look at a few different examples and see which category they fit into. The uh, first couple come from the Samsung Nation site that I've already introduced you to. Here's a badge that you get. It's called the Cruise Badge that you get for hanging out on the site certain amount of time you spend on the site but basically you show up to the site and as far as you're concerned you just are there and this badge pops up after a certain amount of time. What kind of reward is that? The Samsung Nation Cruise badge is intangible, right? Just a badge. Uh, most of the examples we're going to see in gamification tend to be intangible rewards but not all as we'll get to. It's unexpected. It's something that just pops up when you spend a little time on the site. Presumably this is something that Samsung puts in to give you a little surprise reward and get you engaged in the whole bad structure that they're trying to use to drive behavior. And it's engagement contingent. Now at some level you might think this is completion contingent because it requires you to spend a certain amount of time. I'm guessing it's 10 minutes based on the design of the badge. But from the user's perspective, this is a badge you get just for hanging out there. It's basically a badge that you get once you've spent enough time to really be thought of as engaging and visiting the site and not just popping on there and popping off instantaneously. So I would consider this an engagement contingent reward, something that you get unexpectedly just for starting to spend time on the site. Here's another badge on the same Samsung Nation website. This one is for hanging out a lot and uh, it's basically I think for 30 minutes of time on the site but this one is a quest. So this one's a little different. It's still intangible but it's an expected reward. You get this badge for doing something on a quest which defines a set of rules. The quest says if you spend 30 minutes you will get this other badge the notion of course being this other badge is cooler or there are more badges than just spending 10 minutes on the site but the fact that you know that you're going on a quest turns it into an expected reward and it also makes it completion contingent now that you know you have to spend 30 minutes to get the reward you gotta spend 30 minutes to get the reward it's not just something you get for embarking on the quest now many examples of rewards in gamification and otherwise are hybrids of more than one of these categories. Here's one example from World of Warcraft. This is an achievement that you get for various fishing prowess in the game. Yes, if you haven't played WoW, fishing is actually a skill in the game. The reward here you get is just a title, so intangible reward, just uh, something that goes in front of your character name. And there's all these subcomponents, and some of them are things like catch a thousand fish. 
that's uh, completion contingent, pretty clear. You catch one fish, you don't get it. You catch 100 fish, you don't get it. You catch 1,000 fish, you get it. Um, but some of them are different. Some of them are, are performance-based and competitive. So this one here, Master Angler, you only get if you win a weekly fishing contest, uh, get the most fish or get certain special reward fish in a defined contest. So that one actually is not just completion contingent, it's performance contingent, and so on and so forth. There's a mix of different rewards here that are built in. And uh, the point I just want to make here is there's a lot of complexity that can go into reward design and in designing gamification the key is to think about the different possibilities and come up with the rewards that are most effective in motivating users but as we'll get to in the subsequent unit also ensuring that there is a truly meaningful and rewarding and valuable experience for those players.